So November 25th, Showtime pay-per-view, fighting Demetrius Andrade. Tell us why. Demetrius Andrade is a great fighter, very technical, very sneaky. So I think this is going to be a great test for myself, uh, but I am going to come out victorious. I feel like I can hit him with shots where, you know, I can probably put him out. You know I come and I bring the fight. Like, I'm coming to fight. When that bell rings, okay, let's fight. So how does it look? Me being the out of Bubu Andrade. Left hook, down goes, Coy's almost down, Lemieux in trouble. Benavides are going to close the Cena and David Benavides has starched Rogelio Medina. That's just exactly how it looks, yeah. On November 25th, Benavides and Andrade will enter the ring in a very interesting clash of styles in the super middleweight division. Both fighters undefeated and hungry for glory. To put them in the position to win a world title. The Mexican monster is a two-time 168-pound world champion and has faced his share fair challenges with titles stripped and reclaimed. However, has continued to put on a string of impressive performances with his aggressive and fan-friendly style. On the other side of the ring, we have Demetrius Andrade, a tricky and talented southpaw, but who has never really put his stamp in the sport despite being a two-division world champion. But moving up in weight class and joining PBC has given him the big fight opportunity he always needed. With their pass about to converge, the winner will be pushing the case for a world title fight and a potential chance to take on the mighty Canelo Alvarez in 2024. So on that note, let's take a look at the strengths and weaknesses and what tactics will be required to win come fight night. With the Mexican monster more or less ploughing through most of his opponents to date, he faces a very different challenge in the tricky southpaw Andrade, and there's the possibility we could see him struggle in this fight, as his last encounter with a left-handed fighter was against Dennis Duglin back in 2016 when Benavidez was 19. However, you could argue the recent matchup with Caleb Plant was a good fight to have going into this one, as Plant has a similar style to Andrade. Obviously, southpaw, yeah. so that's different. Is it some, somewhat similar? Yeah, it's, it's somewhat similar. Um, he does things different than Caleb Plant. Um, but, you know, it's, it's mostly the same fights. It's going to be me trying to go hunt down the fighter. You know, I find a lot of stuff in myself that, that you know, that, I, that I'm really good at in the ring. You know, um, I'm good at, you know, cutting the ring down. So I'm kind of just worked more on those strengths for this fight because it's basically the same type of fighter. You know, a guy that runs around a lot that's really defensive, so. In terms of those similarities, Plan is someone who likes to box on the outside, use their jab to create openings, and of course counterpunch. In that fight, Benavidez had a relatively slow start, with Plant pushing the pace by going to the body before going up top, and in my opinion, he will need to be prepared for the fast intense start from Andrade, as this is something he has done a lot in the past, and often hurting opponents. Like this. Oh, right away, Keeler goes down! Now, of course, this is a 12 round fight, and although Plant had much success, fighting with that much intensity early in the fight can use up a lot of energy. And David did a good job in terms of conserving his energy using controlled aggression. And for this fight, charging in recklessly could expose him to Andrade's counterpunching, with many being critical of his footwork as he comes into range. Squaring up on the inside, losing balance while opening himself up for counters. Um, you know, and Benavidez, I think his biggest issue in this fight is, is going to be his footwork. Uh, I feel that he has terrible footwork. You know, he brings, he squares up often. And I think a fighter with Andrade's skill set and experience, I think he's going to be able to expose that, come forward, pick his spots wisely, move, be elusive with his defense as well, make this guy miss. And I, I think we're going to have to see a better version of Benavidez if he's going to pull off this win. He's going to have to be the best we've ever seen him in, uh, in, in the boxing ring. And maybe it is right to criticize Benavidez in this respect, but so far it has worked for him. And as seen in the fight versus Plant, smart pressure using feints and cutting off the ring effectively and picking out the right moments to unleash his right hand will be crucial against the southpaw. Benavidez, in my opinion, is a very underrated counterpuncher who usually waits to block, catch, or dodge an opponent's punch before pitching back with a powerful counterpunch himself or quick fire combination. Usually a block left hook or a shoulder roll right hand are his go-to counters. 
before following up with a quick combination behind it. However, against a southpaw, it is usually the right hand for the orthodox fighter, which is the best weapon of attack. And for this fight with Andrade, I think he needs to look to actively get himself on that outside position, while at times letting Andrade lead first, so he can try and block and counter him with the right hand. A good example of a fighter who sets up these counters, and in a way reminds me of Benavidez at times, is Zhang. In particular, he tempts opponents by slipping the right hand so he can counter them with a deadly left cross or right hook, usually starting in that tempting high guard position to make opponents throw a punch. And of course, Benavidez usually gives a very tempting target due to that high guard stance at times. And Demetrius leaves himself wide open for counters sometimes after throwing the left hand. While he uses level changes before throwing the left hand, that can lead him to get countered successfully while he can also sometimes square up trying to throw a wide looping left. This gives the perfect opening for me to counter him with the right or the left hook. Or create an opportunity to throw a quick punch flurry, which Benavidez does so well. And personally, I feel this will be the way to go for Benavidez early in the fight as if he hurts Andrade early, it will put him in a much more comfortable position to try and apply pressure and get off his combinations. Now, overall, Andrade is a very tricky fighter to tie down at times, in particular the second half of the fight, where he will tend to box from the outside using unorthodox footwork, using his jab, lots of level changes, feints as he waits to counter with the left hand. I suspect a potential game plan for David and his team is to put the pressure on the second half of the fight, similar to what they did with Plan. Andrade can get pulled into a battle at times on the inside early, but this is exactly where Benavidez will look to get the majority of his work off, as he quickly looks to fight out the clench, throwing the lethal uppercuts and hooks, which can definitely do the damage, as seen versus Plan. And even all those years ago in 2016 against Douglin, the right uppercut on the inside to the body was a great punch to throw versus the southpaw on the inside. Let's go. Put him talk about for the last round, Joe. Body and uppercuts, that's all he needs. Ahead. And past seven rounds. Oh, knockdown score. And as a southpaw, Andrade tends to bend to his left off the center line. However, this is the perfect shot for the right uppercut or right hook. While he would also occasionally turn southpaw himself to get into a position to throw his own left hand. And personally, I believe leveraging his strength and body punching should be key in this fight and should work on attacking Andrade's midsection consistently. And going off that last fight from Demetrius, it looked like he was hurt to the body, even though it was considered a slip. And this could create further openings up top for the right hand if Andrade looks to lower his guard as he tends to do in the second half of the fight. So, mixing up his attacks with his hooks and uppercuts to disrupt Andrade's rhythm will be absolutely key, while fainting is also a vital way to help set up his own single power punches and the jab to force Andrade to bend to his left. But for me, the main question is, can he impose his will like he did in the plant fight to Andrade, who at times is a lot more awkward and unpredictable than plant is? He has the acronym, the articulation, the intelligence, the speed, the maneuverability. So need I go on more? <laughs> I mean, he, he has all the facets to give David a horrible night in the office, and that's what's going to happen. Don't count out. Do not count out Andrade, man. He's a sneaky, sneaky fighter, good, well-schooled boxer, um, and he has what it takes to outbox Benavidez. On paper, Demetrius Andrade is a fighter who you can't help but think will cause some problems. A dominant lead-handed southpaw, a boxer who looks to counterpunch, while also just being very awkward and unpredictable at times, even if he makes you raise your eyebrows at times. With all that said, fighting Benavidez, in my opinion, could well be as tough as fight to date. 
due to the aggressive style he possesses. And as much as David looks like he gets hit a lot at times, he does manage to block a lot of these punches with the guard that gives opponents a false sense of success, which makes them commit more. However, seeing that, Boo Boo is also a hard man to hit himself due to his awkward elusive style at times. Andrade has proved time and time again he's one of the most difficult men to hit cleanly in the sport, and even looking at the CompuBox numbers proves this. While also being a southpaw adds an extra layer of complexity for his opponents. Southpaws often have the advantage in creating angles and catching orthodox fighters off guard, and I recommend you check out my video on this if you want to find out more in this area. But however, what will it take for him to beat Benavidez November 25th? We all know Andrade is a very fast starter, and this is where he seems to carry most of his power in the early rounds. Nevertheless, he does start to fade later in the fight, opting to box more on the outside. And going off the last fight, Benavidez took his time in those early rounds, looking to figure out plan instead of going for broke. And for Andrade, this may just be the perfect time to unleash and use his unpredictableness. He sees an opportunity. His team sees an opportunity. They're going to come out guns blazing. Boo Boo tends to start really fast in fights. He, he, he's awkward, he's tricky, and he can punch. He can really punch. In particular, that looping overhand left hook or cross, which he interchanges between head and body. But that's, that's not a killer's Oh, down he goes! With David's guard in particular, he can leave himself open for the body shot in the high guard position. And targeting this with the jab and looping unpredictable heavy left hands, no doubt will naturally put Benavidez on the defensive and disrupting his rhythm. And as we discussed before, it could be even worse for him if he manages to catch David if he squares up coming into range. Andrade will also sometimes continue his attack by shifting into an orthodox stance so he can continue his attack. It's a very risky move to use as it opens himself up as I just mentioned earlier in this breakdown. But if it pays off, it can be truly devastating to defend against. So if Demetrius can set up David with a feint to the body to open himself upstairs, this could just be the money punch early for him. While it's also helped by the fact Andrade is constantly using level changes with the jab and the backhand, which in turn plays into his feints, whether for the jab or the left hand, and it makes opponents very hesitant to commit at times. And now, if he is unable to hurt Benavidez early in the fight or make a mark in the first six rounds, I suspect he will resort going back to what he does best. Boxing on the outside and maintaining the distance will be key. Using his awkward movement and circling left and right while sticking out his jab from different level changes as discussed. Get the second half of this fight going, that's usually when he, he comes on strong. You listen, just because he comes on strong with those other fighters that are not able to move the way I move, we can't, I, you know, but I'm glad he does that. I'm glad because it's still going to work into my favor. So the first half, what is going to happen? He's going to take pounding and all of a sudden he take all the pounding. He takes it all. He's, he's just, he just takes everything in the second half. He's, nah, I don't know. I'm going to be running the second half then. <laughs> like, oh, oh, shit. Oh, I'm up eight. All right. We, I'm out of here. That is something that is just going to be his natural instinct. So I'm I'm going to study, I'm going to learn, I'm going to figure out how to keep him from even getting to that point. And if he does, the fight's all, I'm, I must be winning. And all I got to do is use my IQ and pick the shots and do exactly what Timothy Bradley said. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what the plan is. However, as much as this has worked for Andrade, he has made mistakes from time to time getting himself caught unnecessarily. For example, sometimes he'll pivot out to his right in the southpaw stance, which makes him susceptible to lose his balance, and you'll need to be careful not to get caught like he did versus Williams with the right hand. Instead, I believe he should be using a higher guard, using linear footwork before moving laterally, while looking to avoid prolonged exchanges on the inside. This, of course, will frustrate Benavidez if he can't close the distance or land any shots, as Andrade tends to look to hold on on the inside, but Benavidez is very good at fighting out of the clinch, so this is an area Andrade should definitely look to avoid in my opinion. But given Benavidez's aggressive pressure style, Andrade should look for opportunities to obviously counterpunch by timing his advances as he squares up or throwing his sneaky right uppercut through the high guard, which does work from time to time. If he can manage to frustrate Benavidez with his awkwardness and still land shots, 
he might be able to just pull off a spectacular win. Overall, this could be a very interesting fight. Benavidez is obviously a great aggressive come forward fighter who will keep coming forward for the full 12 rounds, looking for the opportunity to counter punch and hurt you, while Andrade is a very fast starter who can be very unpredictable and possess knockout power himself. This is one of these fights which I honestly believe could be over within the first six rounds or will go down the stretch as both fighters try to impose their game plan on the fight. Will Benavidez's pressure end up being too much for Andrade? Or will Andrade's fast start finally take out the monster? Or can he take him into deep waters and outbox him in the later rounds? We'll find out on November 25th. This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the fight. Comment below your predictions. As always guys, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the fight when it comes and I'll see you in the next one.